So we on? We are. We are rolling. We're rolling. We're live. Uh, we're so live. Good, no, we're not live. We're not. We're not live. live. <laughs> I wanted Lisa to be here so it seemed like we were live today. But um, uh, good evening. This is our first late night late, show. Late. Um, yeah. I'm Carlos Hernandez. If Carlos starts nodding off, uh, um, I won't. Please I, forgive him. Luckily, I didn't take any pills today. So. Um, after, even after breaking my toe. Um, How, would you, when did you break your toe? I went to Kroger's Thursday. Here's the opening of the show. There's a little uh, monologue. I went to Kroger's, and I'm like playing around on a little motorized scooter. So why? You've got a broken <laughs> ankle. That's a terrible idea. But listen to me. I know. And then I stopped. We were heading out the door, so I went first. And as you know, you go. It's the automatic door. And for a brief second, I guess I didn't move. So it started to close again. Then I went forward. So my toes just got Kicked crunched it. in the door. And it was this, it, the the toe after the dinosaur toe, the the toe right after that one is literally like the bone went down, but it didn't. So now someone has to snap it back up. So I feel it, the bone pushing against the skin Lovely. of my foot, mm. and my toe is just there. And I, and I, I would I don't want it to touch it because I'm afraid it's gonna be like Harry Potter when <laughs> they debone him in part two, and it's just gonna be like nothing there, and that's gonna freak me out. So. So I'm living. Wait. Is that the is that the same foot as? It's the, the same foot that I broke my that's ankle. That's good, at least. That's what that's what everyone's saying. They said, "Well, it's good because they can't do nothing about the toe." And I said, "No, they have to straighten the toe out, or it's going to grow the other way." <laughs> so, so that's going to be bad. Um, it's going to probably give me another <laughs> two weeks in a cast. Ooh. And literally, I have him into the emergency room because I'm just going to go to him because that's what they did. Might as well. They told me go to go to an orthopedic. So I'll just wait till I go Monday. Which I was going to say, uh, are you doing anything? <laughs> no. Oh, she's gonna have to take off podcast. Oh yeah, we're doing a podcast Monday. So here we are, late at night, and I'm Carlos Hernandez, and that's my uh, broken toe story. That's and this week, did you have anything anything else interesting? <laughs> well, as you heard, I, I have not. Now, let's see what good came out of this week. Uh, Rhonda got a new shift of the job, which mimics nice. my hours, and so now cool. we have the same hours, so we're off at the same time. So now I can just take off around on weekends and take a long drive and go to the movies or nice. It's 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 good, but um. It's always good, but yeah, yeah. So my, my, as you heard on the phone, my ex-wife, uh, my 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 week only had that good news, and it wasn't about me; it was about my girlfriend. So. Nothing wrong with that. And this is Jeremy Knight, the incomparable Jeremy. I am, Knight. I am Jeremy Knight. Hello, everybody. How was your week, Jeremy? My week was all right. I'm, <laughs> okay. I'm not going to complain. I did, did a lot of work from home. Did you? And watch a lot of movies. Yeah, you did. Because I there were a big chunk of movies that we're we're talking about Richard Link later today. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and uh, I hadn't seen all of his films. I mean, there's he's got a, he's, a lot of movies that he's done. Yeah, I, um, I hadn't seen any of the Before trilogy, and now I've seen all of them. Oh, did you? Did you? Um, and then I also, I mean, we we briefly did. We just got finished watching, or some of the guest. You haven't finished it yet. Uh, I have watched the guest like six times since it's come out on Blu-ray. Um, <laughs> that's what I've spent my week doing now. But uh, yeah, no, I mean, I I watched a bunch of good stuff. I went and saw Whiplash again this did week. You? Where was it? Where was oh well they re- AMC um, always does the okay. they release That's all right. the Oscar That's films right. um, and so well, we're going to talk about the Oscar nominations as so well. Are they doing Birdman? Yeah, Birdman's back. Uh, Grand Budapest is back. Um, all the Oscar. I mean, I, other than I Boyhood, I don't think I saw Boyhood re-released in theaters. I don't know. They we'll they see. They but it was in theaters for a long time. <laughs> uh, Carlos did. saw Boyhood as well. Yeah, I did. Um, I saw it yesterday. And I, I saw it for the first time a couple weeks back, um, right before we did last week's podcast, and uh, and then. Uh, yeah, I mean, I watched a bunch of stuff this week. Gone Girl came out um, on Blu-ray, and Did so you I, I bought it and, and showed it to my family. And, oh yeah, what they doing? They they loved it as well. So um, for, for the first half, my mother was like, "Oh, they're overacting. This is terrible." <laughs> and I was like, "No, just just wait. Just get, there's there's a there's a purpose for <laughs> everything." Uh, if you haven't seen Gone Girl, you should. It's great. I'll um, see it. It was on my top ten of the year. But yeah, so that that was my week. I literally that's about all I did. I worked on some weddings and um, work from home a little bit, and then uh, you watched a bunch of movies. That's good. It's all good. Good, yeah, of course. Watching Can't movies play. is good. And there's a lot of news uh, this week as well. Um, we have a couple things we're going to talk about before we get to the Oscar nominations, which were a big, big deal this week. Obviously, anytime they get announced, everybody goes crazy because they never get it right. Um, everybody's always upset that they're, there's, they're never going to please everybody. Let's be fair. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, though, um, they there's always something that they miss that's just uh, that's just baffling and confusing and frustrating well, every year. It's and uh, this is uh, just another one of those years. And uh, they did get some things right, though. We'll talk about those, but. To start, though, um, American Sniper made $90 million this weekend, that's, which is... That's a lot of fucking money for a movie. That's crazy. That's opened up like three weeks. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that's 
That's insane. It's bigger than Avatar. And granted, Avatar was. I mean, it did take a little bit. That that yeah. film picked up as it went. Yeah. Uh, but still, that's that's a that's a shit ton of money. No, no, ninety million for. And again, I, I mean, like you said, I, I, <clears throat> the reviews are, 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 are so so. I mean, a lot of people love it. You know, it's nominated best picture. I mean, it's got like a seventy five percent on Rotten Tomatoes, which I think is but yeah, uh, you know, yeah, kind of what I expected. I mean, everybody's like, yeah, it's good, it's solid. I mean, Clint Eastwood's a great director. Yeah. Oh no, no. Uh, Bradley yeah, no, Cooper, no. of course, is. Um, people are taking him a lot more seriously over the past yeah, couple yeah, of years. Yeah, yeah. He's definitely somebody to you know to watch. I mean, watch, yeah, yeah. everything he does, he's he's been really picking good roles. But yeah, I mean, I, I am surprised that it's made this much money. I, I, mean, I, I guess once it got nominated, the not, yeah, the nomination was the big thing. And I'm, I, that's we'll, we'll talk about that later. Yeah. I, I think that was just a. I mean, it's not a bad thing because I mean the film looks fine. Um, no, no, yeah, yeah. Everybody's like, yeah, it's fine. I mean, it doesn't surprise me. <laughs> yeah, I guess, but fine. there's other films that I would rather see um, in that spot, but. We'll, we'll discuss that in a little bit. Yeah. And then uh, moving on, uh, Amazon actually just announced, this was actually, I think, today, um, that they're going to start producing a bunch of films and uh, basically releasing them in theaters so, just like anything else. So I was going to ask you, but I said we wait for the show. So then I guess like Netflix that produces series mostly, they're going to go one step further and actually produce film. Yes. which is Feature-led films. Yeah. And so like I mean, they're already producing television and uh, yeah. I think it's, it's I mean, they, they, got not, they got an Emmy or a uh, Golden Globe nomination. This, oh, uh, for that Transparent. This, uh, right? For Transparent. Yeah, 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 so, yeah, like, yeah. I mean, they're, 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 they're making good content and uh, I mean, they, they're they doing cool things. So I, I, I'm excited about this. I mean, I think it's, especially as a filmmaker, I mean, I would love to be able to, I mean, digital distribution is kind of the, the way that it's moving. I think there will be, always be theaters. I mean, obviously... Amazon's going to go for like a um, a dual approach. They're going to they're going to release it in theaters and then release it on demand on their streaming service, Amazon Prime. Uh, I, th- I think it said like a couple months after um, it, it gets released in theaters. So that'll be cool. I think that's an interesting way to do it rather than like uh, I mean that might even make it. I don't know if they'll be releasing it on Blu-ray or what. Yeah, you know, I have no idea how that's going to go, but. Uh, that's that's cool. I think it's awesome for especially for yeah. like independent filmmakers because we'll get more. That, of a yeah, shot. that's what I was gonna say. Yeah. And there's a film on the uh, on, in our news today that uh, we're gonna talk about next that uh, that was released by a company called A24, um, which mm. they released a lot of like smaller films like uh, they did mm. Lock, Enemy, uh, Under the Skin this year, mm-hmm. um, and then they have this new oh, new film coming out uh, Ex Machina, which I just showed yeah. Carlos the trailer for. Um, I was a little upset about that. Like, yeah. but <laughs> any, anyway, um, like, like Amazon though is like I I I, I think they're going to kind of take that approach though and and produce some you know give a, give a shot to some films that normally wouldn't you know get made through you know the Hollywood system and. Um, so I, I think that's really exciting. No, yeah, no, I, I agree. If you, like you said, like um, I remember years back, uh, like anyone could put their stuff. Like it was a the guy who worked at the Whitney Museum that I worked at, and uh, he put his CDs there. And uh, I remember I asked him about it. He said that yeah, as long as you know you produce a product, they'll sell it through Amazon for you. And I, I think that's kind of cool because, like you said, I mean that means you can make a movie. Mm-hmm. And get it produced through Amazon, you know. Yeah, I think it's exciting. Exciting. I mean, same with Netflix. Know, yeah, I'm, yeah. Ex- I'm excited about all of this stuff. Yeah, yeah, of course. Of course. And uh, HBO breaking away from you know. Cable yeah, I feel, I'm, but yeah, but then we won't have it on demand no more. That's not a bad thing. Well, no, I mean, I'm, I'm going to pay for it. I mean, I, like, I'll, I'll pay, I would much rather like I'm, I'm you know. Um, moving to a new place, you know, later yeah, this yeah. summer, and I would much rather play pay for HBO Go and Netflix and Hulu Plus rather than. Pay for a whole cable package. I mean, that's just kind of what I would rather do. That's just me. I mean, you know, yeah, I guess. Could, I guess I the guess. only thing that they're keep that, that's going to keep that um, you know going is, is sports. I mean, you're never you know sports and, yeah. and live television. I mean, obviously SNL things like that. I mean, mm-hmm. you're never going to get rid of those. I mean, especially sports. I mean, yeah. and on demand though could be something like a sports on demand pay per view stuff like that. That could be a way that they kind of go get over that hump and move away from um, cable companies. We'll see. Yeah. I, don't, I just. I mean, for your sake, I hope, I hope the cable be, he works at Dish. Well, that's why everyone um, freaking out at Dish because of this. And um, Showtime might, is making the same move. And, yeah, I mean, I guess the uh, cable, I, which is kind of good because cable charges so much money. They've conglomerated this country with, with that. If people can break away and, and charge, in my head, I won't pay no more than 10 bucks a month for yes, HBO. Yes, it's got to be because of Netflix. Yeah, I mean, and, yeah because in terms just, of value, there's no reason. Anything, they should actually make it a cheaper package. Yeah. but. Should be five, five, ten bucks at most. Yes, and and that's the only way. I don't survive. think anybody will pay for more than that. Yeah, I'll I will. Pay no more than if you think about it, though, with your even with a uh, cable subscription, though, it's an extra ten to twenty, thirty dollars sometimes just for like the HBO package. Yeah, you know, it's nineteen dollars so, on. But on they this. don't make they don't make that much though. Yeah, I'm sure. You know, additional. No, we don't, and that's why we don't even offer it for free anymore. HBO. Yeah. Um. But yeah, we make nothing off of HBO, but we make like. Stars, we can we make eight dollars off of stars so exactly. So they're not pulling money. like so if they charge ten and it goes directly to HBO or something yeah. like that, 
they're you know I, I could see them doing that rather than you know I won't be thirty dollars because there's no way no no I, I can't believe with Netflix that, yeah. but but yeah I mean I think that's I think that's where everything's headed it's just it's just a matter of time I mean I yeah. think Amazon and Netflix are definitely ahead of the game and then HBO is the first one that's like all right we're out yeah you know, we're gonna do this on our own they have enough great, content they great original yeah they're, they're yeah, original absolutely. series they have the best Sopranos Big Love well, we're gonna True. talk about a couple of them Blood, later like Togetherness yeah. with Mark Duplass yeah just you were got telling me yeah I want to hear about Girls is is on right now I mean one of your favorites. They've got they've got a lot of good stuff that they're yeah. making each year, and then Game of Thrones comes later. Game of Thrones, comes later. I mean, it, see it. it's a never ending list. Um, yeah. So yeah, I mean, cool stuff happening. Now. And we'll move on though to uh, the trailer for this isn't really news; it's just a, a trailer I stumbled upon uh, for a film called Ex Machina, mm-hmm. um, which is a, a film written written and directed by Alex uh, Garland, who who wrote Twenty Eight Days, Days Later and later. Sunshine. So and then also Dread this past year, uh, two years ago when that came out, yeah. um, and it stars Domino Gleeson. Who was in Frank this year, um, and also he was in the Harry Potter Harry films. Potter films yeah. The trailer for Ex Machina, though, is uh, it, it looks it looks interesting. Um, yeah. It's got Os- Oscar Isaac as well, who's in Drive. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah uh, I like him. Inside Lewin Davis, he's in a lot of stuff. Yeah. Uh, and then they just recently a uh, a most violent year with uh, Jessica Chastain. Um, Oscar Isaac, uh, I think, is incredible. I mean, especially in, uh, Inside Lewin Davis, like we can give that man a leading role. Um, but he's 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 a great actor, so I'm excited. So this this is it's a sci fi film mm-hmm. um, that uh, it's about like a Donald Gleason goes and, uh, and basically moves in with Oscar. I, that's what I don't. I don't yeah, fully yeah. understand that. It's a trailer, yeah, obviously. So we yeah. don't know yet, but um, you know, he moves in with Oscar Isaac to work on this prototype, which is this um, this robot um, mm-hmm. that that um, that they're working on. It's supposed to you know advance technology and that's yeah. another thing. And um, it I, apparently it looks like Donald Gleason supposedly kind of causes her to feel romantic, romantic feelings, feelings towards him. Um, Love. And, and we've seen that before. Um, yes. But yes. then it gets a little dark, and it looks <laughs> like it could be really interesting. That's the yeah. part I like about the trailer. Like um, uh, 2001, you know, like the computer goes against its uh, creator. Or... And, yeah, and it looks like Oscar Isaac isn't a good dude. Um, <laughs> I don't know if I'd want to... I don't know if... I'm glad that's in the trailer, because that's what's interesting about it. But at the same time, like, I, that would have I would have been a nice little surprise in the film mm-hmm. to not know what's, you know... Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, we'll see. It, look, it looks interesting. Interesting. It's a small release. I don't know exactly when it's going to come out. I think it's later this year, um, but it, it looks really good. It looks interesting at the, at the, at the very least. So, yeah. and then uh, we'll move on to the Oscar nominations, which um, were the big big deal um, this past this past week. Yeah. So, what are your thoughts on the Oscar? I mean, you haven't seen um, all the films. So I haven't it, seen all the films. <laughs> I've seen a couple of them. Um, so let's see. I mean, you know, the basic stuff like Birdman. I'm very happy to see you nominated. No, yeah, that's not. So uh, and I know you were probably happy to see Grand Budapest nominated. Uh, some was at Whiplash. I'm pretty sure you were kind of excited oh, about yeah, that. I know I am. Um, so I mean, you know, looking at that, it seems it seems at least like they still kept you know from the the Golden Globes. They still kept the Imitation Game and the it, Theory it, of Everything. It, it, I mean, there's a lot of the same stuff from the Golden yeah. Globes, but we did get a couple more. Like Whip, well, Whiplash, I really I think Whiplash is the best film of the year. Yeah. Um, it's not my favorite. I think The Guest is my favorite film yeah, of the year. But yeah. uh, Whiplash is the I think the you know, if you're gonna pick a movie to win an Oscar, I think the I think Whiplash is the one to give it to. But I, I have not seen everything though. Like I said, I haven't seen American Sniper. Um, I did not see a theory of everything as as well. Um, so I mean, I, there's a couple that I missed, but uh, I think Whiplash is just phenomenal. Uh, so I went and saw it last night actually. Well, J.K. Simmons was still nominated for Best Supporting Actor. So yes, which is great. So which is good. Yeah. Um, so. I mean, yeah, J.K. Simmons. I mean, it got it got a uh, Best Picture nomination. It got Best. Uh, so I, I think it's Best Adapted Screenplay. I forgot yeah. which uh, which category if it's Best Adapted or Best. Uh, Original. I, I think it's best screen. adapted screenplay because it was based on a short film that the same director made, um, and I don't know if that's why it's considered a best adapted mm-hmm. screenplay versus an original. I don't know, but yeah. Whiplash is fantastic movie, uh, and then for editing as well, um, Whiplash I believe got nominated for that. Also, let me double check that. Uh, yes, which editing. is which I really think a lot of people said Boyhood should win, but I I think Whiplash should win. Yeah, Boyhood purely for like the combination of sound yeah. and I mean Boyhood. Um, considering it's a three-hour film, and the, yeah, there's yeah. there's some good editing to make that interesting at all. Um, no, well, that's and, and argue, let me ask you something. Let me, I, to, I mean, I don't know if we're going for the rich one, but since we're talking about editing, did you? Uh, okay, so editing when we watched it, all of us. I, I saw it with my with my girlfriend Rhonda and my sister Charlene and her daughter Stephanie, and even with uh, Gloriana for a little bit, and we didn't know when, like, how much further it was. You just assumed. You know how many years have passed, or how many months have passed. Yes. So I don't know if that's a good editing job or not. 
when I think about it, but I mean, well, I mean, I don't know that you're supposed to know the exact number. I think I think it's I think it's a film that captures these little moments. Yeah, these moments. Are, yeah, exactly. And generally, we associate a certain age with those things happening, like the first day of high school. Obviously, you're like 14 or so. Um, yeah. And I mean, it's it's not so much about like how old he was. It's just it's just these things that happen along the way along that are important. Way, yeah. um, and uh, I, mean, I think it's I think it's it's a great piece of editing just from a standpoint of like you do have to establish every time you you cut and you jump in time, mm-hmm. you have to establish where we're at, we're at yeah, that's a hard thing to kind of tackle and that's what I'm um, saying yeah but, but, but it was good it's it a good piece of editing it, now yeah. in comparison to like Whiplash is kind of frenetic like you know it, it, energetic editing like uh, you know to music and you get you have all these intercuts of like uh, instruments and things like that I mean it's it's amazingly well done just in terms of being able to uh, like line up shots like shots of instruments with the actual music that goes along with it yeah. is, is un- it's I, I just I don't even know how I would approach a, a, like a film like that mm-hmm. from an editing standpoint I mean, yeah. it's it's really damn impressive uh, so I, I think whiplash should win yeah. but uh, a lot of people are, are rooting for boyhood we'll see what happens but yeah, um, yeah I, I don't know I think I want whiplash to win everything but that's I know, just my I know, personal, you, thing. Your personal thing there's yeah. no there's no nominations for the guests so well, I can't the snubs, I mean like <laughs> no the guest is not an Oscar so <laughs> I saw all these people online just going crazy about like I, I just don't understand man I cried every time I watched Guardians of the Galaxy what? and <laughs> It should have won Best Picture. Best Picture. A lot of people what? said that. Get, get out of here. Have you ever watched the Oscars? I mean, I'm not saying that that, that doesn't you know deserve an award. Or yeah, no, no, it's no, a great no. movie, but it, I mean, it's not gonna, that's not a movie that's going to get nominated for an Oscar. I'm, Same I'm with really, the guests. Really. I mean, you know, yeah. it's not. It's just not going to happen. I mean, just like um, some of the things we'll talk about that didn't get nominated that totally should have. Jake like, Gyllenhaal for Nightcrawler. Oh yeah, a bunch yeah, of bullshit. Actor, yeah. He was nominated um, the Golden Globes. Though. Nominated yeah, yeah. for the Golden Globes, which yeah. is fine. I mean, I, but. I don't I don't understand why you wouldn't nominate him uh, as the best actor. I mean, there's a lot of good performances this year, obviously, but it's just... And, and especially considering, like, that's a role that, like, everyone talked... Everyone that saw the movie was yeah. like, Jake Gyllenhaal is fantastic in this really? movie. Yeah. I mean, there's no one denying that. And, I mean, obviously no one's denying that, like, Steve Carell was good, Bradley Coop. Everybody, yeah, in, yeah, the, everybody. in this category is good. Um, I mean, I'm glad to see Michael Keaton get nominated as yeah. well. And I would, of these, I would like to see him win. win. That's just yeah, me. I agree. But I, agree. I mean, uh, Eddie Redmayne is is you know looks like he gives a really great performance in Theory of Everything. Yeah, that's what everybody's been saying as well. So I, I mean, I'm not, I wouldn't be surprised by that either. But come on, give it to Gyllenhaal. This is a bunch <laughs> a bunch of bull crap. Um, yeah, I, I don't know that that and that's obviously the, the one of the biggest snubs I think of the entire. Uh, picks. I mean, what, what, is there anything that you? Well, use? I was gonna say like uh, Lego. The Lego Movie was a nominee for best yeah. animated feature. That was like that's genius. Another, that's I mean, another, uh, uh, and then you got these songs. Now, the sea I don't. I still don't think Lego person. Movie would have won though. Uh, but, I, I, but but nominated again. Think, two, have you ever heard like, Song of the Sea? The uh, Tale of Princess Kaguya. Well, that's uh, that's what's his name. Uh, Japanese. Uh, yeah, but I'm going totally. Uh, I have not. Stop. That should have been Lego right there. I mean, one yeah, of them. It them. should have got nominated though. Yeah, I, don't, I, I, th- I still think uh, um, How to Train Your Dragon two would have won, but um, that's just me. or or um, Tale of a. I'm going blank on how to pronounce the Princess uh, Kaguya. Ka- Kaguya. Uh, Princess Kaguya. Kaguya. Yeah, I, I just think box trolls should not have been nominated. I mean, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's great from an artistic <laughs> standpoint. I, like, yeah, yeah, I like the yeah, art. Yeah, yeah. I like I like the style of it. But um, Hero Six is good. I like. Yeah, big, so I mean, we, we've talked about that before. But like, <laughs> yeah. I mean, but I think I think it should be not because I was I was alone in not yeah. liking that film. Everyone yeah. else did. So I, mean, I I'm not surprised. I think. That's totally fine, but I think Box Trolls is the one that shouldn't be there. I agree. Um, and then uh, directing was kind of interesting. Selma yeah. didn't get a nomination, um, which is uh, just frustrating. Uh, like I, I mean, and I'm not even going to go into racial reasons. It's just like I, I still think like the you know the front runners for best picture should generally get direct director nominations. Not, and Selma's certainly you know could take take it home. I don't know. I, I don't think so. Based and on then, you know, the they had that votes, little article about she's a female director, and female directors normally don't get it. Yeah. nominated. That doesn't make sense. You know? Yeah, but like when they when they're clearly you know some with some of the best directing of the people that were nominated, I don't I don't understand it. I mean. Yeah. Uh, Birdman was, was expected. Uh, Richard Linklater for Boyhood. I'm glad they picked that. Um, you can say what you want about yeah. the movie. We'll talk about that in a bit. But yeah. um, I, I'm glad they picked that because I mean I think it's I think it's a really well directed film. Just being able to, to kind of handle n- not so much like thematic elements in that movie, yeah. but just the the performances over the course of that you know the amount of time that was made, being able to kind of make that a cohesive story yeah. at all mm-hmm. is a, is an accomplishment. So. Um, I'm, I'm glad to see that. I, 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 I mean, there's not too many that I, I would like to see David Fincher, but 
I mean, he also gets girl. nominated yeah, for surprised. pretty much everything. So, I yeah. mean, I'm not, I'm not, that's not somebody that never gets nominated, yeah, you know. Yeah. So, I, I'm not super disappointed about that. Uh, cinematography, though, um, I just have to say, I think I really, I, and not, I didn't expect The Raid 2 to get nominated for cinematography, <laughs> but I think, I really think The Raid 2 and Interstellar should have been nominated for cinematography this that's year. That's another shot out Interstellar. I this is, uh, Interstellar was shot on film and it blends with. Um, special effects. I mean, or like, yeah. or, sorry, CGI. Um, um, better than almost any film. I mean, yeah. I really, it's it's unbelievably impressive. The fact that that was shot, you know, in a format that's um, you know not digital and and was was produced to blend properly with all of these you know these different effects that they put in, in post production. I mean, I think the cinematography in that film is just amazing. So. I, I'm disappointed about that and the Raid Two because I think the Raid Two is one of the best filmed action movies I've seen. Yeah, we, we just feel story title literally movies, ever. Yeah. I, I, it's it's again the the Oscars. I mean, but that's not one that I expected. But still, yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm still frustrated by it. Um, yeah, I mean that's about it. I mean, foreign language film I would have liked. Uh, uh, Force Majeure did not make it, and um, and I, something so a video was released um, for foreign language film uh, Force Majeure. It's, um, yeah. it's a it's a I don't know what country it was made in to be honest but um the director filmed himself france? was it france force majeure i mean it makes sense but, but i'm not going to say france and it be you know some who knows it just we never know exactly but go on um and so uh the director though filmed himself mm-hmm. watching the academy award nominations and um his film didn't get nominated yeah. and him and i don't know if they i think they were co-directors on the project mm-hmm. but uh they you know they were obviously really disappointed by it but one of them like runs into the the you know off camera and yeah. like screams and it's yeah. uh, it's devastating to watch and it's I think it's another example though of why these Academy Award nominations are important like people, yeah, every yeah. year somebody says like no it's not these are stupid you know obviously like what did you expect like you know they're never going to get right but the problem is they are important to the people that make them the the artists course, that they create course, these films course, and, yeah. and so when they don't acknowledge the fact that something is great like Force Majeure is a great movie I mean I, I don't. I don't understand. Like, I, yeah. I say, in every year they get it wrong, and somebody is is hurt by it. Yeah. You know, and that, no, that's, I know you that video is an example of you know just how important these these stupid <laughs> awards are, and uh, it's just frustrating every year to watch that happen. Um, I mean, yeah. I mean, other than that, I mean, sound mixing. I'm surprised to see Interstellar. To be honest, um, mm-hmm. I didn't have a problem with the audio, but a lot of people did. Um, there a lot. There were a lot of complaints about theaters yeah. not being able to hear the dialogue and stuff like that. Um, Writing for Boyhood is interesting, and it's not because it's not because the the film wasn't written. Yeah, yeah. You know, but it's it's uh, like a lot of Linklater films. Uh, I I feel like it's it's hard to tell what's scripted, what's and not. And yeah. some of that's just really good direction and, and really and good agreed, script, agreed, you know yeah. screenwriting. But I just never you can never tell. Mm-hmm. And so Boyhood was one of those, especially because it was written kind of as they went. I'm surprised that that got a nomination, even though it is well done. Don't get me wrong. Like, yeah, yeah. Um, but I am glad to see Whiplash in the other writing category. So I, I don't know. There's there's some good stuff and there's some really frustrating things. But uh, overall, not a terrible year. I mean, it wasn't like I did say I wouldn't watch them if Gyllenhaal Holding get nominated. So maybe I just shouldn't <laughs> watch the Oscar. But I mean, it, yeah, we'll, of course yourself, we'll watch brother. them. Of course we'll watch them. Of course we'll we'll be pissed about them when things don't win. Uh, <laughs> it's just gonna happen. That's just how how it works. So yeah. Anyway, that's the last piece of news. Um, did you have anything else to say on the Oscars? No, no, no. I mean, you know, I mean, like, like, like always, it's it's well represented, even though it's not. You know, I mean, there, there are a lot of good pictures there, a lot of snubs. I think the snubs was bigger than anything else this year. Um, again, there, there were a lot of films, though. To be fair, uh, I mean, this is one of those years. Um, I mean, my top ten list, like, there's yeah, the Con Girl. I'm looking at it, like, yeah, like Whiplash and Grand Budapest were on there. Oh well, yeah, and that's it. For me and for my list, so for my top ten. <laughs> and mine was Gone Girl, my number one film of the year, and I, yeah, Gone Girl didn't get nominated for best picture. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Rosamund Pike though did get the nomination. Rosamund, yeah, and, and I hope um, she wins so that can be. Uh, yeah, I know. mean, um, I am disappointed. I I do think the performance uh, by I'm go I don't know the actress's name. She's Australian, I believe, but from the Babadook. I'm really disappointed to see her not get nominated. Uh, I'm not surprised necessarily, mm-hmm. but I really I really would have liked that. Um, but yeah, I mean. There were a lot of good movies. I mean, yeah, I, yeah. like I, I, I like most of the films that got nominated, um, but, none, but hardly any of them were on my top ten list. Uh, I do think Whiplash, though. I'm really happy about that. So yeah, no, no I knew you'd be cool no complaints that. there. But yeah, I mean, we'll we'll see what happens with them. But um, I, I think the nomination for American Sniper was uh, not not okay. But that's yeah, just me. Um, we'll 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 
we'll talk about that when uh, when when the awards come out. We'll, we'll bring all this up again and be pissed off again. But for now, <laughs> we're going to move on to our director of the week, uh, Richard Linklater, sure, who uh, I believe he. I know he's from Texas. I think he's from Houston, though. Yeah, uh, he's yeah. from Houston. Yeah, I, I don't know if he, he doesn't live here anymore. I think he no, lives up in Austin not. or something. Oh yeah, he's probably in Hollywood. Austin, who knows? Uh, he's got his own island somewhere, but no, <laughs> his films aren't making that much money. But no, he uh, is a great director. He's been making stuff for you know, uh, yeah. his first Slacker was his first film, which came out in nineteen ninety one, which yeah. is before I was born. Um, <laughs> you know, I mean, he made he made Days and Confused before I was born <laughs> and alive. So um, this man's been making stuff for a long time. Um, I mean, and uh, what are your overall thoughts on Linklater? I mean, we don't need to go I, into no, specifics no, in film. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, I like him. I mean, he's done a lot of movies. But what I like about Linklater, and like I said about most of the the directors you've picked so far, um, he does art, and then he does commercial. And he's more art than commercial. Yeah, And then true. sometimes his commercial is arty, <laughs> and yeah. I like that about him. Um, and I just, I like him. I like Linklater. Um, Bernie, like, Bernie would be an example of kind of like a... You know, an artistic, an art, an art film, uh, yeah, film, yeah, yeah trying to be like also, a true, you know, also can play to a mainstream audience, a mainstream audience, you know, and you have uh, whereas the before trilogy, a Scanner are... Darkly, which was all uh, you know done with a uh, rotoscope. Um, then you got your before f- series, um, Tape is a good one. You know, Waking Life, uh, a lot you know, of stuff. yeah, He's made a lot of I mean, even a Slacker. Lot more than... I mean, Slacker's, you know, improv, one camera shot, you know, uh, you know. Uh, you know, one 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 uh, dolly shot set of one takes. Yep. You know, a lot of intercutting, but but all done in one one single take. I lo- I love Slacker. I always loved it. It was his first film. Uh, another movie that that uh, I saw after Clerks. Uh, so after Clerks came out, I said, "Let me go back because they mentioned Slacker." And yeah. That's when I was like, "Holy shit, this movie's good." Mm-hmm. I have um, not seen Slacker, so oh, you've never seen it this? is on Netflix though. I have, yeah, I have not seen it though. It's been on my queue for years. years but, uh, but like I said though, I had not seen I had not seen a lot of his films before. I mean, I hadn't seen Boyhood two weeks ago. So honestly, the only film of his that I had seen would be Days and Confused and Bernie. Uh, for Bad really? I had seen Bad News Bears though, and uh, you know. Uh, I hadn't seen the Scanner Darkly though. That's been a while. Though, Darkly, so yeah. I need to revisit School that. School of Rock, you're saying? Uh, oh yeah, that's true. So I, yeah. I guess I forget though how many freaking movies he's got. But yeah, anyway, we'll start with the start with the game. You like Slacker a lot. Um, yeah. What do you think of Days and Confused? I, mean, I love it's these. A I mean, that, that's a classic. I have it on Criterion. Um, right, yeah, that Criterion edition of Days and Confused. If, if you want, amazing. if you're gonna buy like a single, yeah. you know, obviously if you like the film. Um, that that's a great set. It comes with a really badass poster cool, of the movie, yeah. and uh, it's got really cool artwork. I mean, Criterion. That that's a really Criterion, great Criterion really release. Sure. And then Matthew uh, McConaughey. So Matthew McConaughey. That film is like you know. Oh, yeah. Well, all right, all right, all right. I mean, that's yeah, where it starts, yeah, and, yeah, right. and and you know, it makes you laugh. You know, I mean, there's all you. you I know. love Ben Affleck in that movie <laughs> too. Like that's just a, it's, it's weird to watch that now and go, oh my gosh, that's him. <laughs> That's well, enough. but yeah, like a lot, a lot of stars come out of that film, though. You know, exactly, yeah, they think yeah, Jovovich or whatever. Yeah, uh, I mean, me. I can click on and name every character that I mean, every actor in the world. I mean, you have uh, let's see, and Jason how did he Lund- find all these people. Well, yeah, you, you had amazing. the young Hollywood of then that disappeared, like all the indie Jason London, uh, Joey Lauren Adams. You had Mila Jovovich, who really is not an actress per se, but. So you know, then you got Rory Cochrane, Adam Goldberg, Anthony Rapp, Adam Red. Goldberg, who's just showed up in Fargo this year. Yeah, too, that's which I was really excited about. good. Um, Marissa Rabisi. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, who else you got? You got, like I said, Cole Hauser. Uh, Hauser. Uh, you have, um, uh, again, we just Ben Affleck, uh, Matthew McConaughey, Parker Posey was in it. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you know, literally. I get Nicky Cat. It's like, there's like 30 people. Yeah, I mean, I'm like going out and I'm like, holy shit. And then, and then. But yeah, so I mean, that, I guess that's it for the, for the big stars. But yeah, it's, it, it's, just, it's got so many people who, who, I mean, luckily now some of them are still big. Uh, McConaughey, Affleck, um, but you know, like you know, you have, like I said, you, you know, all those people there, and they're so funny. And the movie resonates. And, oh, Renee Zellweger, that's right. She was, yeah, that was her one of her first roles too. And uh, it's funny now. I, mean, I still think it's a funny movie now. <laughs> oh no, and it's still hilarious. I mean, like like Slacker, it's good. It's funny. Um, we all have that, you know. Like, well, I mean, I don't know about Texas, but you know, but the, the movie is about Texas schools. It's like you got that guy. I think it's set in Austin, but I don't know where exactly it's set. Yeah. I, I got to remember because I haven't seen it in about five years, but... It's been a while for me. Yeah, so. but it's, it's just funny. You got you got those people, the guys who still hang out at the high school trying to pick up little girls and shit like that. It, it, it's just a funny, really good movie. And, and again, groundbreaking it for, for what it was at the time. So. Absolutely. And then he did uh, before before the sun before. sunrise, sunrise us, yeah. which is probably where we're going to argue. Um, <laughs> and then uh, no, 
What do you think of the Before trilogy? I, I, I saw. All... I, I'm, I'm only. I only saw Before Sunrise. I did. I mean, okay. Like I said, I love Slacker. I love Days of Confused. So I watched Before Sunrise, and it's not. And again, it, you know, it's his artistic. You know, it's not my bag. You know, I'm sorry. I'm not into. I, it's, you know, it's a romantic film. Uh, I love Julie Delpy. I mean, one of my favorite films of all time, Killing Zoe, and she's like the star of that. She's she's adorable. Yeah, well, in all these movies. And, and Ethan Hawke, you know, uh, young hipster doofus, you know, back reality bites. I mean, it, it, it's, it's okay. It's, just, it's not my bag. I mean, you know, you it's got... It's not that. so much... Like, people, a lot of people will call it artsy, and it is... It is very a, artsy, very but artsy. But it's not though. like, you know, it's not real stylized. It's literally yeah, just... Yeah. A, it's just the, it's the, you know, single shot, like, ten, yeah. literally, there Falling are ten the minutes, you know, yeah. ten, ten minutes, as long as they could shoot film. Shoot film, yeah. Um, you know, ten minute takes were just them walking through the city. I see. I love this movie, uh, I, and, and I have to say, <laughs> that's, that's you. Uh, no, it's not me. It's not always me. Uh, well, no, 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 you're right. Uh, well, you're more into the. Well, well yeah, I'm just gonna say. So, so like of all the movies that have come out, like you know, the past couple of years, like, like well, this obviously came out. Um, Eighty-five. Um, yeah, ninety five The year after I was born. Um, so yeah, so like. 20 years ago, man. Yeah, right? Um, so what, what's so impressive about these movies, though, is that they are they were shot uh, with decades in, in between, yeah. and like he, he you know, weaves that into the plot in a way that's different from Boyhood, where he you know, shoots a little bit each year. We kind of yeah. see the, the almost every moment. Yeah. Yeah, not every single one, but every one of no, 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 yeah. in Boyhood. And you get like a three-hour movie with all of the little moments in that, though. It's like, it's, it's these, you know, this short period of time between these two people I, mean, I guess for those of you that have not seen it I would, I would highly recommend it but the um, it's basically about it. these two people that meet on a train um, they get off the train and, and walk through it, it uh, Ethan Hawke and Julie De- Ju- is it Julie Julie, it's Delpy. Julie Delpy right now uh, Ethan Hawke has to has, a, has to make a, a, a plane flight um, and he he's gonna leave the next morning and uh, they're in Vienna and so they get out and they literally just walk around and talk yeah. for an hour and a half and it's brilliant. This movie, these movies are fantastic. I have to say they get better as the series goes on. Um, they, they do get better. I think Before Sunrise is not the, I'm not going to say it's the worst. I mean, it has literally 100% Rotten Tomatoes. Everyone likes yeah. this movie. Uh, they're all great, but uh, the first would be my least favorite of all of them. Um, except for the ending. I, I do love the ending of that film. It's a, like the um, I like the concept of, you know, you only get to spend a night with this person, and they kind of accept it halfway through the night and say, no, we're just going to let this be what it is. You know, we're not going to exchange phone numbers. And yeah. I love in the, in the opening of the second one, that's what they say. Like, like what the hell were we thinking? Why didn't we exchange yeah, yeah, yeah. phone numbers? This is terrible. And so they don't meet for ten more years. And I knew that going in, obviously. But if um, So I got, the, I got the opportunity to watch all three of these films back to back, and and, you know, um, over the course of like a couple days, and um, it was it was I I love the way that he writes these films that they're kind of their own isolated evening where these two people meet and talk and hang out, yeah. and it's not overly romanticized. Like it's I mean, especially the first one is probably the most so, but the, yeah. the second two though are aren't, aren't quite. I mean, it's it's more just a lot of and I wouldn't say ph- philosophical mm. um, discussion, but it's it's. Um, yeah, just to, you just talk about like relationships and politics and and the way that uh, men and women view the world and like I, it's just it's it's fascinating to watch like as you know you start off in their in their early twenties and then the second film they're in their early thirties and you know they've kind of grown a little bit yeah. matured like the different things are important to them Ethan Hawke has um, has has a kid and is married and um, and then the third one is all about marriage and about how mm. you kind of where marriage goes after so many years and it's uh, it's just I think it's a fantastic mm-hmm. portrayal of just kind of how people interact and um, I, I just I love that a filmmaker is going to go I'm just going to make a movie about people talking and what's so great about that is like <laughs> when you go hang out with friends and stuff like that like what we're doing right now no, no, I, all we're doing that. is I, all I, we're I, doing I, is talking about yeah. something we love you know and this and, and like what's it doesn't necessarily mean that something's happening. It just it, it, what's interesting about it is the conversation. And yeah. It is just kind of the back and forth and the little banter, and um, that's and, what and, I love and, so much about yeah, it. when and, it's and, done well, obviously. Um, and I know, and I know you dig that. And, and like I said, it's like you said when we're hanging out, you know, we go out to eat at Denny's with John's, I don't know, whatever. I mean, those moments you always say, "Oh, we should have recorded that." Or, you know, we have some conversation, mm-hmm. and and that is that is so kind of you know the cinema is simple, uh, but I mean. Well, but a lot know. of times, though, that's those are like moments that are like real funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This yeah, isn't yeah. even that though. It's no, the, no, no, it's no, the no, mundane I know, I know. moments. It's but, like but, the, um, you know, just the like. There's a they kind of they talk about like 
a lot of times they, they discuss the, the the difference between romantic love and, and like yeah. um, and, and passion for your work and like which one you should really focus your attention towards you know is romantic love a real thing is yeah, yeah. you know or should you just live well, your like life you said, for what you do it's the philosophical banter that that makes it because yeah like they get into politics and like you said they get but because she becomes all, all kind that. of an activist in the yeah, second film, yeah. it kind of, and that's that's something that's interesting is you kind of you, you see her perspective from the first one where she kind of you can see she's hinting towards kind of that lifestyle. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not saying I'm not going to comment on you know whether or not I agree with any of what she, oh, either of them say, but um, you know, and then in the second one, it's kind of matured and she's kind of um, focused her attention towards that. It's become her career. Yeah, um, and then they also though both of them have you know moved on with relationships and they've been they've met other people and, and you know they've yeah. kind of they've kind of become more cynical and like so the second film gets a little darker than the first yeah, one yeah, does yeah. and it uh, and the third one is literally there's there's 40 minutes of arguing in that movie and it's yeah. genius um Mama. Let me pause it real quick. Go on. um and, and I think let me let me collect my thoughts real quick um <laughs> you gave the whole dark the, so the, the third film though literally uh, there's there's probably 40 minutes of arguing in that movie and it's yeah. literally just and, and the, but there's there's also scenes that, that just make you smile because of the way that their relationship has grown over yeah. the course of um, this amount of time and uh, I just and the way that they treat each other is very different in each film and, uh, and yeah. I think like you know the films acknowledge the fact that there's been this gap in between mm -hmm. you know each movie and they um, and they acknowledge the like the characters also have are, have taken that much of a break with each other or um, you know I don't I don't want to spoil where, where yeah, the films yeah, yeah, go yeah. but um, it's it's really admirable I think in a way that like I love boyhood and we'll get to that in a bit but um, we wouldn't talk about Bernie first but uh, but I think these movies capture the yeah. way that relationships work almost better than Boyhood does, and I think they're—I I just think they're fantastic. I, I think yeah. it, after watching all three of these movies, like I—I I, I, just—I wanted to know every little piece of information from each character. Like as the, when the second one starts, you're like, "Oh my gosh, you haven't seen each other in ten years! Like, what did you do?" And like, yeah. I want to know. Like, I want. And so they, they drop little pieces of information along about what they do for careers and what they do, you know, in their love life and kind of the way that they look at you know the opposite the opposite sex and things like that. They kind of drop those little hints at that and the way that they've changed over the course of the film and it, it's really brilliant I think yeah. um, I, I just I, and after seeing those movies I think he's one of my favorite directors I think I, I, now, that I've, now that I've seen the majority yeah, of his yeah, work no. uh, aside from obviously a couple films but I mean I, I think he's just a fantastic fantastic screenwriter and, and director and I, I just I, it's it's amazing, I think. I think this is one of the best trilogies I've ever seen. Um, Interesting. Not that there aren't that many great trilogies, but still, um, I, I think... Like Star Wars or Indiana Jones? I mean, well, like kind of but those are uh, yeah, very different. But I, mean, I know you. I, know. But, but I, I still think I like these more than those movies, though. Um, I mean, to be perfectly honest, I do oh. love, I, I do obviously love, you know, yeah. Back to the Future, um, Indiana Jones. Oh, I mean, really um, children, yeah. all, all these, all these things. But but I, I really love these movies, especially from a filmmaking perspective. Not, not because they're super technical interesting I mean a lot of it's literally just you know two, they, they shoot at multicam so that you can yeah. edit um, but uh, for the most part it's it's just two lockdown cameras recording what people say and you just cut between the two of them yeah. and there's maybe slight movement like when they're walking along the, the streets of Vienna or the second one's in Paris and the third one's in Greece um you know, the, there's a lot of the country and things like that. But yeah. Very, I mean, yeah, the third movie has literally yeah. a four because now they, they moved to digital with the third mm -hmm. film. So there's like a 15 minute, maybe not 15 minute, but it's at least it's at least 10 in a car. Um, and there's just one cutaway. Um, and I don't know if it's to edit or what, but um, it's 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 literally the first 20 minutes of the movie is just <laughs> them driving a car. And uh, um, it's it's genius though. I think just from a from a, it's very different. It's an original film because mm -hmm. there is nothing like this. I mean, there's yeah. I was trying to think of like what my favorite boring talkie movie is <laughs> what do you have one by chance I'm, uh, I'm just bringing that on you sure, but... I, I, I'm like I mean my dinner with Andre would be like the, the most famous of yes, yeah. movie where you just have a camera two people eating and talking um, oh man my favorite movie where they're just talking oh man that's a great question and I, I oh man I'm not even going to be able to think about it it's good. I sprung that on you. No, last no, minute. no. But yeah, I'll think about it as we go along. Another film that I do love that does this is the trip, uh, the trip to yeah, you as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, you know, I think those are great movies as well for that same reason. Yeah. It's, just, it's just a bunch of people sitting around talking, and um, <laughs> I admire that from a from a filmmaker because it's it's daring. It's not a film you're going to be able to pitch to a studio in terms of like we're not going to make a lot of See, money we, off these movies. You know, it's I'm a, glad you said because I'm starting to think well, I don't like these movies. I don't like movies. <laughs> I'm, sorry. I'm like the big. I'm like thinking in my head all the famous movies. 
movies where they have the big chill. Well, I mean, you can say like you know, Clerks would be one where they literally just sit around oh, and talk the whole time. Yeah, all right, you got me there. Clerks is basically that, but there's more. They go upstairs or on the roof. Well, even, play hockey. I mean, even Pulp Fiction you got though, is, is a lot of just sitting. And I was going to say Pulp Fiction at first, but I'm like, but there's a lot of action that moves the story. True, obviously, there, yeah, there, yeah. there is so, a lot I mean, of things happening. Yeah, but. so I guess I guess I, that's why I didn't dig the before series because that's basically what this is. I mean. If you like yeah, Seinfeld, and it's totally. It, it, you can call jokes, it a gimmick. Yeah. I don't think it's a gimmick. Yeah, though, no, no, because no. it's done sincerely, and it's not. Yeah. Um, just like Boyhood is not a gimmick. I don't think that's. I don't think you can call that a gimmick. I mean, it may, I guess it. I guess it. I mean, you could say it's a gimmick, but it's not the only yeah, thing. You that, said at first. You said it was like a gimmick type thing. Did I? I don't recall that. <laughs> well, but I mean, you could you could say it's a gimmick, but I don't think it. I mean, the film does a lot more with that. It's True. not just. It's True. not all that the film is. You know, it, just like yeah. a Edge of Tomorrow, which came out this year, it's like if this you have this sci-fi concept about somebody who mm-hmm. loops, and that's that's a gimmick, but you know, it doesn't mm-hmm. mean that that's all that the movie has. For no, 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 I agree, um, agree. And so, I mean, I think, I think and, and that's, but then again, for the, I mean, I, that movie is such a big hit, and not to deviate, but Source Code was basically the same thing, which I also love. I love Source Code, and then you also you go back to Groundhog Day or even Seven Days, that TV show where they go, guy goes back seven days, and he loops. I mean. Uh, you know, not original, but but I did enjoy that. Um, but it's a uh, fresh new take on it, regardless yeah, of whether yeah. or not it's something that's been done before or it's gimmicky and and yeah. uh, concept. But I, I I love these films. I think uh, yeah. and I'm saying they're not for everyone by any means. Um, it's a lot of talking. I mean, I, I would compare it to literally just hanging out with your friends and listening to them talk. And if you don't yeah. care about these people at all, you're gonna hate them. Um, I mean, yeah, you agree, know, and, and if it's you know, it's not it's not an eventful movie by any mm-hmm. means, but it's it's. It's fa- I like it for the same reason I like hanging out with people and discussing things. Yeah, with them. yeah, yeah. And uh, so I think it's I think they're great films. I think I really think they get better as they go. I think the second one is a perfect movie, and the third one is very great as well. Yeah. Um, what what a series! I mean, I just think it's impressive uh, the way that they the way that they were. You know, well, I'm glad you enjoyed those because um, <laughs> he has other movies as a viewer. But I mean, you found those. Oh, I love, but I love all mm-hmm. of them. No, no, I, do. no. I, I, well, I, have I you can ever seen say them? I love. Everything I'll go down this real quick. Have you ever seen Suburbia? Suburbia, no, that's Funny. actually not on my list. Is that the a, Newton Boys? No, the, and that's okay. Waking Life, that's RT. I have seen that. Tape, have you ever seen that. Tape? No, with Ethan Hawke, Uma Thurman, as it like may have been a rape. Uh, no, I need that to was see. really good. But then you saw School of Rock. Yeah, I've seen School which of Rock. Which I, I can't. Remember. They were told the ten, anth- ten year anniversary. They never done it yet. But love School of Rock, and then um, before Sunset, and then Bad News Bears. Was hated. That's yeah, not great. Yeah. It's not very good at all. I do like a. Uh, but I love Fashion Nation. Yeah, festival, that is good. Because yeah. the book is really good, and I, and I actually like what he did with that movie. So many movies. I mean, really, like, this, this guy's done... Yeah. Now, obviously, they're all smaller, you know, yeah. like, he, you know, he, he works on micro budgets. They're not things that, uh, you know, they're not big studio movies, you know, they're... So he's able to make a couple of them a year. Well, that's what he does. Yeah, you know, I mean, he does the uh, big movie like a Bad Bears, all the sheep and or the School of Rock, yeah. or the you know, well, Newton Boys. Well, those, those would be his good. bigger budget films. Yeah, those budget are films those are things that, that you know we're able to. Fast Food Nation was a bigger budget, budget film. Uh, Scanner Darkly, I like, but I didn't love. This is something that took me by surprise. I didn't know he did Me and Orson Welles. Yes, I didn't know he did that. And, yeah, he directed it. Yeah, yeah and I got to check that out because I think then come Bernie. Mm-hmm. Which, Which I, I think discuss. Bernie is a great movie. You like Bernie? Like? I really like Bernie. Interesting, but well, I like it because we live in it. Texas. We haven't talked about that yet. We live, we you know, we live. We, neither of us are we're from expats. here. Yeah, you're we're from. We're not from yeah. here, but you're we from live New York. There, I'm yeah. from. I'm from Chicago, Chicago. But um, but I've lived. I've lived here a long time. Yeah, um, my mom would say not that me. old. Um, like I, I, you know, I've lived here a good majority of my life almost now. Um, but. Uh, I love Bernie though because I have family in East Texas, <laughs> and it's it's shockingly and hilariously accurate uh, yeah, the way yeah. that the people are portrayed in the movie. And he got a lot of the, the real, real people, people. which that, is what's so amazing. Yeah, yeah. That blew me and away. It's it, you know it's and it's there's kind of a wink at just what yeah. they're doing the whole time, but it's not like it's not like a this is Spinal Tap where it's it's super scripted and yeah, it's, yeah. it's um he just kind of lets them talk and it's uh it's genius. I think yeah. I really, Jack, Jack it's, it's not great. It's not like a ten out of ten. But I, no, I no, do really not. like it. It's fun. I and like Matthew McConaughey's very. We always he thought that gay. he's... we always thought that Bernie was gay. <laughs> <laughs> and that was one of the that was kind of the leading into the McConaughey's one of those first ones that I that I started to love <laughs> Matthew McConaughey. Um, yeah, where'd you get that? Oh, that's a that's a thing. Is it? That's yeah, that's an internet thing that uh, it, it, it this. This revitalization of McConaughey's career McConaughey's has, been, has been titled the McConaughey's. The McConaughey's with uh, starting with Bernie, I guess. <laughs> no, it was start well starting with uh, a lot of people liked uh, Lincoln Lawyer, which is not Lincoln. I, and I actually I was, bought it. And I, I was just saying sarcastically, it. Lincoln uh, Lawyer. Yeah, oh he's great in it though, but it's a really dumb movie. Um, I really think uh, what's his name is terrible in it. Uh, the, the one who plays 
I, the, I remember the seen one he, Oh, you have not seen it? It's no. uh, I, I hate this. I really dislike this actor. Let me find it real quick. The Lincoln Lawyer. Uh, he plays like the the guy that Matthew Mike, Matthew Conner yeah. plays a lawyer, obviously, in it, and he goes to help this client, played by Ryan Felipe, who I just think For is real? is horrible in this movie. Oh, uh, and a, a lot of people love him in it. I'm just like, no, he's terrible. But he just he has like a wooden face. And, and it's it's awful, but yeah, no, I, I I I dislike the Lincoln Lawyer. I think it's stupid. But Matthew McConaughey was really great in it, and that kind of it was it was his first decent role in a long time, <coughs> and uh, it definitely led to a lot of good things. So just, we loved Matthew McConaughey. Two thousand eleven was a year. Two thousand eleven was a tenth year. Yeah. But uh, yeah, and so he did he did Bernie, which I think I mean you you enjoy. I, I did enjoy loved. Bernie. I, I'm not gonna lie. First time I fell asleep, uh, I think maybe because I was sick, but I I watched it again. And, and Jack Black is amazing. He's, He's really so good, good man. Movie. And, you know, it's like, this is a true story. And the guy would have got away with it for Matthew McConaughey. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I just, I love, I love, I did like Birdie a lot. I mean, it's it wasn't strangely great. strangely dumb movie. But, I mean, it's smart, but, like, it's about dumb people. Dumb people, yeah. Uh, and, I, and I always enjoy films and television about really stupid people. I think it was my answer. Really School of Rock is people. a TV series this year. That's why. Uh, so I, I'm gonna look forward to seeing that. <laughs> do, do, are you though? I mean, this is it have Jack Black, or is it? Is it actually? I mean, just Linklater actually have a produ- Is it a producer? Or is it it says directed by Richard Linklater. Oh, that's and the misadventures of Dewey Finn. So let's see what happens. Thirty minute series. I doubt Jack Black's gonna do it. I, but, now um, I haven't seen I haven't seen School of Rock in a while. It's been a while. I mean, I, but, I remember really love liking it. it. Oh, I love that. It's I, one of my favorite movies. That movie came out when I was ten years old. Shit, you not even. I was Rock nine is. in two thousand three. Oh shit! So if you really think about that, like you know, the, I I have not seen it. I've probably watched it like six times since then, but I have not seen it in a while. Yeah, I was yeah I'm a, I'm a baby. Uh, I had no kids. Oh my gosh. Yeah, but yeah. So look, I don't know if that holds up, but um, we'll no, see. No, it does. Yeah, I, every time I watch it, I love it. It does hold up. Those kids are genius. I, I mean, it's good. And then, and then, of course, after Bernie comes the movie that that started all this picking of a of, of a director is uh, Boyhood. Yes. I mean, you got Before Midnight. I've already discussed Before Midnight. So I guess we haven't done a formal review of Boyhood. Uh, yeah. um, it's in for a, a new film. It's uh, I guess it's worth going a little more detail about. Obviously, uh, it's a film that um, he notoriously, but also yeah. a lot of people respect. I think it's amazing. Uh, he he made it over the course of twelve years. Yeah. Um, you know, cast the same actors, same everything. They shot for like a week or two each yeah. year, um, and uh, and they made a movie out of it. And I think uh, it's it's an it's what an achievement. Yeah. Um, I don't think it's his best film. Um, no, not at all. It's not. It's not. And and I kind of, I was like defending it, not seeing it. I think because you didn't see it either. But then you had seen it after you lent it to me. And you said you liked it. Um, and then I watched it, and and, and I, I think it is good. I mean, I love the fact that I got to see this kid grow up in front of me mm-hmm. and yeah. his sister and and Patricia Arquette. In all her glory, and, and she is great. She is. A, she is. Yeah, she I had like Ethan Hawke too. I think Ethan Hawke Hawk was good in it too. Yeah, I liked it. You know, I liked when he became when he became a father. And um, the chair's a little squeaky. Yeah, the chair squeaked on me. Um, it was really good. I just it wasn't much of a story per se. I yes. mean, it was just watching this kid grow up, mm-hmm. and that was the amazement part to me because it's yeah. like I dig that. It's like you know, I started and he was like probably whatever he was eight or nine, and then you know, cut to he's. Ten or eleven, you know. You, well, he's really young when it, when it starts out. I mean, I, well, was he five or six? Because well, it ends when he's twenty. Twenty. Yeah. He's like twenty though. So, so it had to be twelve, 12 years, years, probably eight, eight, yeah. eight years old. Yeah. So I mean, it is. I mean, and and it kind of dead, you know. But even though I, I thought it was funny because uh, he meets this that girl Nicole, and you know, it's the beginning of something new. Mm-hmm. And I remember when he was younger, and they and the the drunken stepdad shaved his head. Yeah, you know, he this little girl Nicole said she liked his hair, so mm-hmm. she was the only one that made him feel better that day. Yeah, and I was hoping that would have been the big reveal at the end. That would have been sweet, but it wasn't. But that's fine. It's not, it's yeah, it didn't need that. it. The, the yeah. movie wasn't trying to pull any punches no, no, no. in terms of yeah, you know, big plot reveal. But it was okay. Like I agree. I, I thought it was really good, I, and and I loved watching that. I mean, you know, besides the documentary Seven Up series. Where yeah. you get to see people grow up, but they were real life people, stuff like that. Um, I think uh, the closest thing to it is his before series. I, I really, I really do. Yeah. Um, you haven't seen all of them. Yeah, yeah. I, I think you would probably like at least the third one. The third one. I don't know. Uh, I think the yeah, but anyway, I think the I think the closest thing to it is those movies. Um, 
but but t- they but they do handle well, yeah, that's true because they, they in really opposite work. ways. Um, mm-hmm. yeah, like the you know the Before series is a, is about people that run into each. I mean, obviously after I'm not going to spoil what happened. Well, it doesn't matter. Yeah. They get married and um in the from between the second and the third movie. Yeah, and and so like we get these little just these are people that have spent like the first two movies are literally just the first two days they spend together. Um, and and it's over the course of twenty years almost, yeah. and so or well, twelve years, 12 years. and um. You know, so that's that's a movie that, that you don't get any of the details. You just get these little brief moments. Whereas Boyhood, you get it's the opposite. And it, but they, both of them talk about how life happens and and how people change and, and how perspectives change and things like that. I think uh, I, what was so impressive about Boyhood, um, especially there was there's a scene where um, she goes to school. She goes to U of H, which uh, we live actually yeah. right by or about twenty minutes from. Um, a lot of people. I was actually supposed to go there for a little while, um, which is kind of cool. I mean, we're from you know, I'm, uh, we live in Houston right, right now, and a lot of the movies shot there. There's a classroom scene though where the pro- yeah the the professor is talking, <coughs> and he's using one. I, I literally I look. It's a projector, but I, I don't remember the name for it. It's not like it's like a prompter. Yeah. You can like draw on, it and it's just like <coughs> literally it's just a, it's like a light that shines through a, like into a mirror, and it projects whatever's under if there's a name for it i just totally don't remember what it's called we had like we had them when i was uh before i was in high school but it's it's not something that like (laughs) that people use anymore and you know you're sitting there and it's like man i wonder and like the whole classroom looks older in the movie and i was like i just wonder production design like how they did that then i wonder oh no that was just the time period that it was shot that's in, right, you know. That's right. Uh, and that's that. That's stinking impressive. Though. <coughs> that's right. Yeah. I'm like, where, I'm like, where are you going with this? I'm like, but yeah, you, just, you remember that, like, like you, you when you're watching it, you go, no, those were just. That's just the, what, you know, like, what time, yeah, was yeah. around <laughs> then, you know. Like you could literally just go to the store and buy these things, and and that's what's what's impressive from a, like a writing standpoint is like there, these things like technology and stuff that's written into the script. Yeah, and yeah. Maybe not it's written in, but it's it's you know it's there, there intentionally. I mean, um, you know, like like Game Boy and stuff like that, yeah. like different like you know little things that you know I grew up with, and mm-hmm. um, you know I mean obviously this kid's about the same age as I am um, when when the movie's over. Really so enough, like yeah, literally yeah. this film, and because it's set in in Houston. There's a lot of things that I've done, you know, like like I've been to like those yeah. exact places. Like there, there's the scene where they go to the Astros game. That was I, cool. I, yeah. It did. I didn't tear up, but like it gave me chills only because what a touching and real moment in a movie. Just that you know that kind of you go to your first baseball game yeah, and like the way yeah, it's shot, yeah. it's just kind of like it's done with like a really not necessarily wide angle, but it's you know it's just kind of like looking up at the lights and at the you know the stadium and just kind of the sheer like. Uh, spectacle of a baseball game is it, it, done in a movie is really impressive. Uh, and and, and so like, you have those little things though that really connected with me. And I, I, I do think the film like it's not. I don't. I don't know that they're really faults because I think the movie is exactly what it needs to be in terms yeah, of. Yeah, true. Um, it doesn't try and be really philosophy, you know, philosophical or anything like that. I mean, you know, you, you, there's ideas there about relationships and about um, family members, and I, I really think more of the story is told through the parents' perspective. You know, from like I really think like the, for the first half of the movie, the only thing I really cared about was what Ethan Hawke and Patricia Arquette were doing. Yeah, um, and every yeah, time they yeah. drop in, which I think one of the best scenes of the movie is when Ethan Hawke's sitting in the car with them talking about, they're just driving through Houston and he talks about like, you know, like, why don't you guys talk to me? Why don't you tell me like, what's like, what's your day like? I, yeah, right. Yeah, I've had that I like conversation that. with my parents. I love that. I think it's and really it's cool. Like, that's what I was like, when we watched, I was like, oh, it's out, it's out. and you know, when they pull over, I've been down there a million times going to the exactly. courthouse. Yep. And you see the, the bus come by, and I was like, oh my God, that's genius. It, see, I love that. Yeah, I mean, but yeah. that's, it, you know, it's because we live here. But that, I, that's I like with me in New York film. That's why I love, it's like watching me for Places New York film. Been. But yeah, it's like, yeah, you can watch. So, like, the Astros movie. game, though, is, like, so, like I've totally, like, I've, I've sat, like, ten feet from there. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's not just, like, you know, it's not just, like, uh, I mean, I'm from Chicago, so, like, Wrigley or something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. That'd be cool, too. But, that like, like I've been to the Astros stadium more than I've been to Wrigley Field, Wrigley you know, Field. and, like, so seeing that, I was just like, oh, that's really cool. Uh, so there's a lot of great stuff like that, though. And then, like, that projector, I was just like, damn, like, that's, like, no, that's just the technology that was present at the present time. time yeah. I, that's because of the way this movie does it, you can call it a gimmick. You can call it what, what it is, whatever. It doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah. But it's that's that's just that. Those are the things that I love about. This but, movie. Yeah, no, I, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Um, and there's a great line. Uh, the daughter who's great and uh, Richard Linklater's yeah, yeah, actual yeah. daughter. Uh, is that his actual daughter? Yeah, it's, 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 I, I believe so. You can go I didn't check know that. that. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. But yeah, no, she, there's a line where she's off at school and the uh, Patricia Carquette's thinking of moving. Or there's no real spoilers to this movie. We can Lord talk about that. Yeah. Um, I don't. I don't really think there's a lot of spoilers to this movie. But uh, Patricia Kett's going to move into an apartment now that they're moving, you know, going away to school, and uh, and 
uh, Richard Linklater's daughter says she's a line. It's like, how am I supposed to do my laundry? <laughs> and I was like, that is the most accurate line in a movie that's been that's been said in years. <laughs> like, you're moving, you're you're moving away from me. How am I supposed? Yeah, to, where am I supposed to do my laundry? <laughs> it's brilliant. Yeah. So like, there's little moments like that that I think that work really well, and yeah. regardless of whether or not. I, I mean, I don't know. I, I just I, I love that so much, and it, it doesn't necessarily make a movie for you because it's a three hour movie. I mean, it's a longer film. I don't yeah. I don't feel like it drags though. It just doesn't. And that's funny because the only reason why it felt like it dragged because my niece can't you know she can't sit through movies like yeah. that. Yeah, and she was like, "Oh, when's this movie gonna end?" And I said, "It's three hours." But I will agree, it didn't feel like three hours. You know, no. only toward the end when she started getting antsy. Then I was like, well, you know, they had to leave, and I was like, okay, what time? What time is it? I think I think the ending is probably my least interesting part. Like, I think I like the. I mean, obviously, I'm a filmmaker. Like, I like the yeah. photography stuff. Not that that's never been tackled in a movie before, mm-hmm. but I, the kid also looks like a, a like really good friend of a mine. Mi- oh, oh, okay. Um, no, just... sorry, it's not somebody you know. Uh, somebody <laughs> I do want to have on the podcast though. His name is Chase Cromarty. Uh, shout out to you, Chase. I don't know if you listen to these, but um, the kid <laughs> looks like... literally just like him, and so the yeah. whole time I was in here, like, damn, that's. That's Chase right there. That's awesome. You know, so well, like, well, I like. I thought you were gonna get to the fact that this fucking kid looks exactly like Patricia Arquette, and he's absolutely a yes, no doubt. I don't know how the hell that happened. Yeah, you know. Um, but I guess we can get, uh, Patricia Arquette is just uh, the scene in the apartment. The the last it's the last scene she's in the yeah, film yeah, yeah. is I think genuinely heartbreaking. Yeah. And it, it didn't make me cry or anything, but it's it's a sad scene and it's it's really well performed and. Uh, I think that's why I'd like to see her take the Oscar home. I mean, for for supporting actress, yeah. Um, I, she, there is a lot of great competition this year, though. But um, yeah, she's really good in the movie. Um, she is. We're just our she goes through a couple of divorces and things like that. And I do like the the way that um, the movie kind of the movie kind of shows that through the kids' perspective. Um, it's 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 really good. I, I think I think everybody should see it. Um, I don't know that it's something everybody's going to like, but I think I think it's admirable regardless yeah. of whether or not you enjoy, you know, love the film. You can you can say it's overrated, whatever. I don't ne- know that that's necessarily the case. I think um, you know if I had to give this a rating, I'd give, it would be a fresh rating. I don't know how you could like say this. This is the worst movie of all time. Um, <laughs> you know, it's it's pretty damn admirable what he did. Uh, Link later is who I'm talking about, but the you know just everything about this movie. Uh, I don't love everything, but I I, I definitely admire. Yeah, yeah. I mean, dude, I, I, like I said, I did enjoy it. Um, it did, it did feel like, at, at points, like I said, I was like, oh, okay, there's no story here. But I did, I, I agree. I, I mean, Patricia Arquette was great. Ethan Hawke was good. Uh, you know, the, the kid was good. I mean, it was great to watch this amazing thing of them growing up on camera. I mean, yeah. you know, like when my the kid do- from Descendants shows up. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Shows up. For I wanted to punch him in the face. I saw the man. So I said, "Wow, he was the kid." Did you get hit a lot, boy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, and like I said, I, I mean, I didn't hate it. I didn't love it, but I didn't hate it. I, I liked it, and I don't know that it has a whole lot to say. And you know, like I don't no, know. No, but, but but again, it's just kind of observing childhood is, more so than it's like interacting yeah. with it. And, and like I said, even though the Seven Up series was first, I guess to do it as a fictional film, but actually all the actors be the same. That's a feat in itself. I mean, the yeah. fact that no one knew about this movie and it's being shot. Over yeah, the course and we of live here. Years. You know, yeah, I mean, like I, I knew about it about a year in advance, but nobody yeah. was like, "Wait, this is a thing that's like actually almost finished." Like, yeah, that's... And, I, and I think that's why it's getting raves because people are like, "Oh my, this is the first time this has been done." You know, this yeah. is an achievement in film. And it's and not it's... something that's going to be interesting ever again. Yeah, like no one's going to repeat. Oh, I did someone for over a hundred years. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah who gives done. crap? Because yeah. um, I mean, it's 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 impressive filmmaking. Yeah. So. Well, yeah. Anyway, that's that's Richard Linklater. I mean, I think his before trilogy is the thing that worth worth yeah. watching. I really think that that series is fantastic. I like Boyhood a lot, but those movies are great. Um, I mean, I, I think um, if you're gonna watch one of them, uh, start with Before Sunset or Before Sunrise. Right, sorry. Yeah. And uh, watch them all the way through. What would be your favorite? We're also gonna talk about what his uh, best and worst rated movies are. Um. Well, my favorite film of his would be uh, School of Rock, believe it or not. I enjoy School of Rock a lot. Um, What's your at, least favorite? My, my least favorite? <laughs> I already told you. Uh, the Before Sunrise, I didn't dig on it. So that was like my least favorite. But, well, I'm, let me see. Just to give you, uh, to be fair to you, let me just make sure that it was that. Um, the Burning Me. Well, I didn't see me in Ocean Wells. Uh, I mean, obviously, you haven't seen everything, but the yeah, other ones yeah. you've seen. You've seen a big... You've seen I've more seen than I have, and I've seen all of them, except for a couple of... Like I said, I didn't see... Uh, uh, me and Orson Welles. I think it's the only one I haven't seen. Oh, and the but, um, two before movies. 
Before, yeah, the before, like yeah. Life. And like if I said, you, waking it. life is... Well, okay, I'll give you waking life, because I didn't like waking life that much. I don't, yeah. I yeah, I don't like waking life. So there you go. I, I, I'll give you that. What do you think is his best and worst rated movie? Best uh, movie. We'll, I we'll think, start believe it or not, I'm thinking that... I don't even lie. I think his best rated movie, because by that time, I'd say is when people started to get it. I think School of Rock would probably be his best rated movie, because mm-hmm. it's the most famous of his movies in, in, the, in the mainstream. And the least rated, I'd say, would be... Mm, Scanner Darkly. Um, you, you're you're wrong on both. both. Yeah. yeah. All right. Give me. Give me um, let me see. So his best rated film uh, is actually two movies. Uh, yeah. He got a ninety eight percent critic rating for both Boyhood and Before Midnight. I knew both Boyhood. Uh, well, I guess though technically, technically it's before. No, it's actually before Sunrise. Technically, but that didn't have as many reviews. Um, before Sunrise got a hundred. Actually, yeah. I believe. But uh, his worst rated one is actually Bad News Bears. Bears, right? <laughs> um, and you didn't need a remake of that. I don't know if did that. Yeah, it's really unnecessary. It's Walter not Miles. terrible. It's just not good. It's, I mean, it's, it's, yeah, it's like Walter Matthau's version is the best. And there's, just, there's just that was a movie that didn't need to happen. Yeah, just like, I mean, just like a couple Jackson, of things yeah, that well, just like many Joey things Foss that are being released this year. Yeah, uh, yeah. But yeah, no, I mean, uh, he's, he's got a lot of good stuff, but. Yeah, you're wrong about the about the, the percentage. Yeah, what are you gonna do, bro? <laughs> no, no, I, I'm not judging you. I'm yeah, just no, I, <laughs> and uh, so that's wrong. Richard Linklater. I mean, uh, go go watch his stuff. He's great. he's a great filmmaker. He's doing a lot of cool stuff. I would love to work with you, Richard Linklater. If you if you ever need a video yeah, editor, in Texas um, yeah. or uh, or somebody to do lighting, let me know. Not that you're listening to this, but still, <laughs> you never know. Well, who One knows? Never know, do but it. yeah, so um, go check him out. And then uh, so we're, we're gonna move on to television. Um, uh, we still can't talk about freaking Archer or American Horror Story. I, I did a lot for the podcast this week, but it's I could right, not. I could right. not watch American Horror Story this week. Uh, I just ran out of time. Um, so I don't. You don't have anything. Oh, but you can do Agents of Shield. Did you watch? I I, I have not watched. I watched the first episode of a uh, what's her name Agent Carter for the uh, Shield. Um, I didn't get to see episode two. Uh, I have to catch up on. Yeah, it. sorry, I said Agent Shield, Agent, Agent Carter. Shield, not, Agent yeah, Carter. Said, I, I forget. Actually, Agent when we Shield. talked about it, I yeah. literally last week I literally didn't know what you're like. I thought you were talking about Agent <laughs> of Shield. I just haven't pay, been paying attention. Marvel so Agents of Shield. That shows how um, like I really care about that stuff. I'll be honest, I mean, it's I mean, bad. The shows that care. we watch. I mean, um, Mindy, you don't you know, watch uh, American Horror. I caught up, and I'm like, you got to catch up. It's good. Yeah. Um, Archer, I haven't. I it didn't record again. Somebody. I'm like recording. Um, so I'm you still to, need to watch all of season five. Uh, yes, because you have my Archer yeah, Vice. I forgot that too. I'm oh, sorry. Oh, man. I should, it's my fault. I, I messed text up you. a lot. No, I, no, no, I'm no. Because no, I remembered it today. I was like, I need to get Archer to, to Carlos, and then I forgot. Danger Zone! Um, let me see. Uh, that's it. You don't watch anything else. We, we don't watch anything. Blackish. I'm caught up on Saturday Night Live. I mean, is um, there anything you want to review? No, I mean, like I said, I, I did Agent Carter happen? Or yeah, yeah, Agent Carter happened. I saw the first episode again. I mean, I, you just but they released about the it. first two at the same they, time. Right now, tomorrow was episode three. Okay, and, gotcha. Episode, no, the first we'll premiere was two hours. Yeah, and that was very well done. I, I liked it. it. It, you know, what they're doing now, being that Marvel is now, you know, got all their eggs in a row. Uh, a lot more special like superheroes will be introduced, but real ones, not like in the first season of Shield, Agent Marvel Agent Shield. Like they released, like. Want to be heroes, and then like in the end, they made them into a real hero, like Deathlock. They're like, yeah. oh, that's Deathlock, but the origin's not there, you know that kind of thing. With this one, like Captain America's in it, uh, Tony Stark's father's in it, so there's a lot of like little things like that which are good. Um, like I said, I didn't get to see second episode. Uh, what else? And uh, like I said, American Heart Story is the only I, I it's the only show I record religiously. Um, and again, and it ended though, right? There's yeah, only, there were only no. Past th- this Wednesday is the last episode. Okay, right? gotcha. Yeah, and then they, they did yeah. two. Yeah, but so again, I'm two behind. No. Yeah, Neil, Neil Patrick Harris is really good. Um, that's to say the least. I want to see it. I might watch and, that. Yeah, so I won't go on with that. But other than that, we're going to keep the news until he catches up. Plus, Walking Dead starts in three weeks. So, so I'll have you review that. I know, yeah, because I know you I won't be up watching on it. it. Yeah, no, I might catch up. Who knows? Yeah, but other than that, yeah, that's it for TV. No promises. Yeah. <laughs> unlike unlike I did with like I've broken so many promises on this damn no podcast like. No like I, I was like, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, we're gonna talk about Archer next week, or yeah, we're gonna yeah. talk about American Horror Story next week. Oh yeah, we're gonna talk about this. And then I mean, we ever understand happens. you're busy with the show. You're, you're the man behind the scenes. I, I'm just the man who guides you to say the right. I things. do prep for these things. Though. I do have to say. I, I, mean, I should ask him more questions. I gotta watch. I gotta watch a lot of. Ooh, we're getting some static. Some static. 
That's weird. A little creepy. Like ghost we just static? Got, we just got some crazy static stuff. That might come static. Out. I'm going to cut all that out because I don't want to hear that nonsense. Is like from the outside or the inside? I have no... Oh, you're going to make me not sleep tonight. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we have ghosts. We have ghosts in in this house uh, attacking our podcast, <laughs> trying to vandalize our work. <laughs> That's not good. I rather have aliens. I, I'm going to cut that out, but we're so uh, you probably won't hear our critique on that. But yeah, there's a ghost in this house. Don't Carlos, say your that. house is haunted. <laughs> they keep saying it. Like, don't I don't have to sleep here tonight. I'm I know, right? He goes, I'm going to be all right. <laughs> what is the Yeah, there's the some ass. weird <laughs> static in the mic. I don't know what that. Well, what was. is that? <laughs> have you go home and be just whispering? It? I'm going to go home. <laughs> Play it backwards. See you what happens. Yourself, then come back here. No, no, no. We're going to be recording somewhere else next week. <laughs> That's what's going to happen. There's no ginger. I ain't messing with that crap. I've been good with no ghosts. See, in the yeah, I'm not going to do what they do in horror films. I'm not going to <laughs> be gone the moment that happens. The Babadook shows the up. The Babadook. <laughs> gonna, Don't scare me. You scare me. I'm going to run away. The Babadook. So anyway... Um, so I did watch two shows this week. Uh, I didn't watch the ones that we were that I was supposed but, to. But what shows did you watch? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Girls and Togetherness. Uh, two two HBO shows. Um, I think one. I think they they're back to back. But I don't know. I never I record everything, so I have no idea like, which order they play in yeah. on HBO every day, every week. But every Sunday night, they uh, Togetherness is a new new show That's by the, one, uh, the Duplass yeah. brothers. Yeah. Who um, they're, they're I mean they're obviously like Mark Duplass is known for um, the League. The was league his, kind player. of his. I, I, it's not the first thing he's ever done by any means. No, no, but, no, no, no. but it's the because he, he did the whole Mumblecore thing yeah, um, Mumblecore, well yeah. before before like kind of making it on the League. But the League was where everybody kind of recognized him um, yeah. as an actor, not as a director. But um, and uh, from the league, he had you know huge success doing that. Yeah. He did. Uh, he released the film, the one I love, one I love which I, I love. It's it's a great. I've watched it again uh, this week. Actually, it was another film I rewatched. But um, the you know and, and he they've been kind of doing independent stuff. Uh, like they did Bad Milo last year, which was terrible. But it had a uh, what's his name in it uh, from he's in Wet Hot American Summer. What's his name? Uh, he's the one that has the fro in Wet Hot American Summer and drives the. Uh, the Volkswagen bus into Maybe, the tree. Yeah. <laughs> what are you talking about? Hold on. Uh, let me see. Bad Milo. I remember Bad Milo when it came out. Terror. It's not, not good. Ken, no. uh, what was it? Ken Marino. Ken Marino, yeah. Who's also in Togetherness, at least for the first episode. He probably won't be coming back. But um, Togetherness, though, is basically a show. It's a... It's a... It's... So, like... He's good at. Um, I'm talking about Mark Duplass. Sorry, yeah. um, Mark Duplass is really good. He, he's been working for a long time doing the the mumblecore stuff, which is you know basically just plotless, um, generally drama um, about you know dramas about um, people who sit around and talk about stuff. Very similar to uh, the Linklater stuff we were just talking about. Um, but it, basically, so the Duplass brothers have kind of been known for this. They work with people like Joey Swanberg and um, a lot of those uh, those folks in that in that. Not, it's not an industry, but it's a genre of filmmaking that yeah. uh, has become a, a lot more popular. Because of um, you know, Mark Duplass and uh, I think it's Jay Duplass. I'm going blank on the last his brother. His yeah, brother's his brother. Um, yeah. His, I think it's Jay Duplass. But yeah. they they co-direct um, this new series on HBO. Um, it stars um, Mark Duplass himself, uh, and, uh, Melanie Linsky, who is in uh, Happy Christmas, which is I on like Netflix her. right now. Yeah, she's she's adorable. I think she's I a great actress. Her a lot, yeah. She's she's really awkward in Togetherness. Mm-hmm. But um, Amanda Pete uh, Melanie is uh, plays his wife in the show. Yeah. Mark Duplass is a uh, wife. Mark Duplass plays like an audio engineer. He works for films and stuff like that, doing television work. And uh, I think Melanie Linsky in the show is just a stay-at-home mom. I don't know if they've gone into like what she does for a living yet, but they have a kid and um, is really young, like one-year-old um, kid. But basically, um, Mark Duplass gets a phone call from Steve Zeisis, who uh, is one a good friend. I think he's a good friend of the Duplass brothers. Is uh, part of the reason he got cast. He's fantastic in the show. Uh, yeah. He's kind of a somewhat chubby, kind of awkwardly shaped balding man um, that uh, is, is an actor in LA and uh, there's a line where he's discussing all the pretty people in Hollywood looking at him like he's um, I don't remember what the line was but like just kind of like an ogre like he's like a, he stands out um, because he's fat and, and ugly and uh, it's kind of a running gag throughout the throughout the show for the first uh, two episodes we're two episodes in um, they, yeah. they, they were his second one uh, last night and I've, I watched it with my parents. Uh, another person that's in it is Amanda Pete. Um, yeah, I love Amanda Pete. Uh, basically, though, Steve Zeisis uh, calls um, Mark Duplass one morning, and he's getting evicted, and they're throwing all his crap in the street. And he calls Mark Duplass, like, I need you to get a U-Haul or something. Like, <laughs> come help me, please. I love you. And uh, he hangs up, and he sits out on the curb with all his stuff while Mark Duplass uh, you know, gets a U-Haul, and uh, they, they load all his crap up. And um, basically, Steve Zeisis uh, moves in. I don't know if Zeisis is how you pronounce that. I'm just, that's what I'm, I'm going to say. Yeah, I see um, it here, but... 
he he moves in with Mark Duplass though and kind of crashes on their couch. And uh, meanwhile, Amanda Pete, who is the sister of Melanie Linsky in, in the in the show, um, she comes to L.A. from Houston actually um, to. She comes with Ken Marino because uh, she's interested in him, and he's kind of an L.A. big shot. I don't know what he does, but uh, he's rich, and she's fascinated with him. And um, basically, he breaks up with her, and she just, Amanda Pete decides that she's not going to go back to Houston. She's done. She's going to live in L.A., so she's going to crash on the couch uh, with Steve Zysis and um, in Mark Duplass in, uh, in, in their home. And so that's the premise. Is, yeah. you know, that's what's called togetherness. It's four from the four of them kind of living together, and uh, there's not enough room for all of them. And um, it's... It's a really great little show. Um, it's it's it coming off of you know the, the Duplass's other stuff, the the mumblecore genre. This is very similar to that. It's not like I would compare it to Girls almost in a way. It's kind of that. Um, it's quiet and it's you know yeah. it, the, generally each episode does have a plot, but it's not really that important. It's nothing like it, the show is just about a bunch of people living together and kind of the wacky antics they get into. It's not yeah. there's no real premise um, for each episode and. Um, but it's uh, it's a lot of fun. It's it's really funny. Steve Zeiss is fantastic. Yeah, right. um, I've always liked Mark Duplass as an actor. Um, I do too. Yeah, he's my favorite person in the league. The league. Yeah. Um, I I it's some, I think the, I'm not as big of a fan of the league as I as I used to be. Um, just because I think it's kind of overwritten now. Um, it's not bad by any means. It's still pretty funny, but it's 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 gotten sillier and yeah. uh, the characters are just caricatures of themselves. themselves um, yeah. Which you know just that happens with comedy a, yeah. a lot. But um, this is just I, I love Mark Duplass though, and so when he has some control over the writing and, and things like that, mm-hmm. um, I always like just kind of the way he the way he performs and and, and everything and. Yeah. Um, so I, I think it's great. I, I think it, uh, it's it's really funny. Amanda Peet is also fantastic. Everybody yeah. in this show is really great. Um, Did you ever see Studio 60 on the Sunset Strip? No. Oh, I have to see that. It's basically... She in that? Yeah, she, she's in it. And basically <clears throat> what it was was an interesting take on, on a Saturday Night Live show written by Aaron Sorkin. And Matthew Perry from Friends. I'm gonna hit or miss it, with Aaron Sorkin, but for the most part, I like him. You, you, you will. I mean, what don't you like about Aaron Sorkin? Newsroom, but you, that's, no, that's new, yeah, but, you, but you like West Wing. Late. I did like West Wing. Yeah, and, but and I, saw, I didn't. I have not finished West Wing. That's like a that's a summer. Yeah, yeah that's television. very. Yeah, it's like a year. <laughs> but um, basically, it was that, and it was just great to watch the show because you know it got into everything politics, uh, and then you actually had they, they you know then there was the. Uh, Rob Corddry was one of the actors. I, on the I show. do love Rob. Corddry. Yeah, and he was like Rob Corddry's. A, he was like you know I guess the Adam Sandler on the show, and then you had um, the Hugh Hewley, uh, D L Hewley yeah. played the uh, Eddie Murphy, you know, black cat, funny guy. So, and it's just really well written about television. I forgot, I loved it. It was a really good show, and Amanda Pete was awesome. She became the new the new uh, producer of the show, and she you know wanted to shape it up yeah. her way. And they were like the you know these guys who've been together all these years you know one went through drug rehab they're trying to keep the show the way it always is and it's just it was like if you if you have never saw Bob Roberts Bob Roberts the movie with um that uh, what's the name directed uh who's the Bob Roberts one uh uh you know from uh Bull Durham it was uh Susan yeah, Sarandon yeah, yeah. Susan Sarandon Kevin Costner and who's the other guy you don't know <laughs> anyway that was the closest that came to a Saturday Night Live type film. It was only a small segment. Yeah. And, and uh, well, John Cusack was the best as a John Belushi type character. But Most anyway, but, but that's, I, I think we, that's what I liked about Amanda P. Amanda P. was cute and adorable. She and, is adorable. And she was so funny in the show. And, and that's why that you told me Amanda P. and I want to see She it. gets naked in the uh, second episode. I don't even say It's so, hysterical. Yeah. I just have to say it's one of the, one of the funnier scenes <laughs> I've seen in a while, but yeah, um, so it, I, I, if you love, if you love the, the those people, yeah, um, I mean, just know that it's more like the Mark Duplass's directed stuff than it is yeah, yeah, yeah. the things that he stars in. Uh, the closest thing would be like like the one I love, something like that of recent at least. But I don't know, it's it's just it's um, it's very mumblecore, mumblecore, and I'm not saying that in a way to, to sound pretentious. But yeah, yeah, yeah. It just <laughs> it just is what it is. There's no real plot. And so yeah, that, that's how I'm going to describe it. But it's a great show. I really like it a lot. Um, yeah, there's there's a great scene in this episode where uh, Melly Linsky spanks uh, Mark Duplass and hits his ball sack, and he, he like starts vomiting. It's brilliant. Oh. Um, so it's 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 a, it's a lot of fun. But I think Steve Zeiss is, is the standout yeah. in this show. He's really great. Yeah, he, I'm he so excited 
to yeah. see what he what else he does. Um, he's in a lot of stuff, but he's yeah. a lot of, he just plays a bunch of extras. And when you and, click on IMDb for writers, it's it's Mark J and Stephen Zeit. Yeah, he's credited for a yeah. couple of them. Um, but yeah, and he's also a, like a co producer for some yeah. like an, like a consulting producer or something on it as well. But yeah, um, it, it's it's great. Go go check it out. And also, Girls, um, which I'm gonna I'm just, we're getting pretty long here. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna briefly talk about um, Girls. I just think is great. Uh, this episode. Uh, uh, Han- uh, Hannah, played by Lena Dunham, um, moves. She finally moves to Iowa, and uh, in order to go to school to get her master's degree, I don't know what. I think it's Iowa University, mm-hmm. but I don't know what exactly. You know, in particular, what what school it is. Yeah. Um, but there's a lot of great like location jokes. Uh, like there's a, she keeps parking her bike and uh, asking people like do like somebody's like oh you don't need to lock that up we live in Iowa you know it's like <laughs> you're not gonna have any problems she's like really I don't have to lock my bike up what it's like it's not New York and uh, and then it gets stolen obviously halfway through the episode but um and there's like there's a joke she she's uh, like looking at this apartment she's like this is two hundred and fifty dollars and it's like a kind of a bigger apartment. Yeah, yeah. Like, what can I get for eight hundred? And then they got to like this giant like three bedroom house and uh, it's like it's it's really, really yeah, yeah. funny. Um and uh she's like two thumb two thumbs way the fuck up. <laughs> it's so funny. And uh and then there's a joke, she goes to her uh, the college bookstore and is buying books and um she she asks like uh, she hands him a, an Amex card, and he's like, "Like, oh, it says I need to call Amex." She's like, "Well, let's call Amex." He's like, "I don't want to call Amex," <laughs> which is we're having worked retail is my least favorite thing when somebody has to when you have to call the bank for uh, for um, the I guess it's for ID purposes yeah, just yeah. to make sure that you have to call him and get confirmation. But he just, he just like argues with her. But I don't I don't want to do that. He's, like the customer the customer's always right. right. He's like, Except not always, and like walks <laughs> away. It's it's really great, and um, so this is kind of Hannah on her own, and uh, it's it's the first time in a while we've got this. We've had a couple, you know, bottle episodes where she'll leave mm-hmm. New York for a little while. I, I hope we don't get a full season like this. I do love the location humor though um, that she does every time mm-hmm. she kind of leaves New York and kind of has to experience things on her own for the first time. Um, and uh, like she calls Shoshana, uh, Shoshana, I guess. Um, who's one of the dumbest characters on the show, but also one of my favorite. And uh, she's trying to make a collect call, and Trishana doesn't know how to answer a collect call. <laughs> she's like, it's not working. I can't, I can't hear you. She's like, just answer the... Do like, you not know how to make a collect call? Uh, and then... Uh, uh, and then Elijah, the gay friend, shows up halfway through the episode to surprise Hannah. And uh, there's a, they go to a party, and a lot of crazy things happen. It's a lot of fun. Uh, and she asks him, like, why, why are you here? And he's like, well, last last week I saw a homeless woman fist herself on my stoop. <laughs> I'm done. Yeah, and so Elijah comes and hangs out with her, and uh, it's it's a great episode. Um, I, I don't want to see a whole season of, of Hannah in Iowa. Um, I, I don't care that much. But I, I do like I, I can do I can deal with this for a couple episodes because yeah, it's interesting yeah. to see kind of how she reacts to this new environment and uh, it's the first time her work is being criticized by people in her graduating or in her class of uh, you know just kind of people that are also writing um, for their masters and um, it's interesting interesting to watch but for the most part I'd rather get back to New York but we'll see yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, that's episode two of uh, of girls um, I, I don't know the title of this episode I, I forgot to write that down I have a bunch of stuff on my note page and uh, that was one thing I missed I left out but yeah it's great you should go see, go watch girls gonna highly recommend it again every week um, I love it we're in season four if you have, you need to watch all of you know all yeah, of, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. all of it to catch up before before you start from season four but very good. So that is it um, for television and, uh, and movies and what? Triggering. You said the oh, that's, the, that's the title. The Triggering. Triggering. Well, there you go. <laughs> Technology. I am TV. But yeah, no, it's uh, it, it's it's great. So that that is TV um, for this week. To, today is the um, what is today? The tw- the nineteenth. Today is my watch the... is five days off. Today I think that is today's the nineteenth. The nineteenth. Today. So is the 19th. I I, I'm, I should have this up tonight, but um. Uh, if not, it might be the twentieth by the time you you watch this podcast. Um, like I said, we're recording very late. We went a little long, but not too bad. We're under one, ten, you know, one hundred and twenty so far. We have like thirty seconds to wrap this up. But uh, you, know, you guys, uh, I hope you enjoyed I'm talking about Richard Linklater. Next week, we're going to talk about um, Edgar Wright. Um, which both of us we don't have to do any work this week both of us yeah, have seen all his you know, movies so, far, so uh, this is the first week where we don't have to we don't have to watch something last minute in preparation for the podcast maybe you uh, should try to find that, that Ant-Man trailer that he did I, maybe I'll, I'll be able to yeah, look that you, up maybe you, we'll you, talk you, about you that. find it on YouTube yeah
Maybe but you should find that. I'll find it for you. Your legs <laughs> be bad. For I don't want to do the work. I'll do it. I'll do it. With my broken leg. Feeling like Jimmy Stewart. But uh, <laughs> yeah, next week we're going to talk about Edgar Wright, though, uh, who is on my list of favorite directors. Uh, yeah, I think he's uh, he's at one hundred percent with me so far. Mm -hmm. So we've got a lot of good things to say, and uh, mm -hmm. we're going to go through his filmography, and should be some interesting stuff on there because they are some of my favorite films of all yeah. time. Uh, yeah. So. We will uh, we will discuss all those things and new episodes of I will hopefully catch up on American Horror Story yes. and we can discuss the finale uh, next week. Bring me the art show next week. Uh, and then yeah, I'll hopefully remember to. <laughs> you should just torrent it. I know. Yeah, Actually, I can Dropbox it to you. you have, yeah, like I can I can Dropbox the. I, I got it legally, I promise. Legally. Um, but I, I'll just drop box you Archer season five, and then we'll talk about it next week. But uh, yeah, and we'll, so we'll catch up on some uh, some other television and things like that, and it'll yeah. all be good. So. All right. That is Indecisive Cinema. We forgot to name the title. I don't think Man, we mentioned the Indecisive title. Indecisive Episode podcast. 6. Yeah, I know. We always do that. So, uh, yeah. So, this was Indecisive Cinema, Episode 6. And uh, we look forward to seeing you next week where it's going to be uh, Edgar Wright and uh, four, or, yeah, four films. Well, if you count the Planet Terror stuff. Uh, yeah. Grindhouse stuff, which is good, too. At least four films. Don't. It's one of my favorite trailers. Oh, yeah. So, you guys have a great night. Take care. We'll see you next week. All right. Bye.